I'm now planning to present to you the ideas and uh, principles behind machine vision systems. And I would like to start with giving you an, an introduction and a motivation to why you as students uh, are supposed to, to study these kind of systems. And then I would like to continue with go through and present the different computational steps in a data flow graph of, of different uh, uh, mathematical operations that are performed on, on these images. And uh, it will start, of course, with, with the image acquisition. And then we typically continue with a, a pre-processing uh, phase of the, the images. And after pre-processing, we also would like to uh, perform a segmentation where we separate the, the interesting image components from the background. After segmentation, we typically would like to identify each individual image component by doing component labeling. And after component labeling, uh, we would like to uh, compute certain uh, features, features that are a, a kind of uh, value that measures some property of these image components. And based on, on, a, on, a, on a, a large vector of different kind of uh, features that we have computed, then we can perform in a final step a, a classification phase where it is possible, based on these features, to recognize different objects. We can, for instance, recognize a, 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 a bolt from, from a nut, just as an example. Or we can, we can identify different letters from each other. And these steps uh, often uh, is part of a typical machine vision system. Usually when I, I'm, I'm trying to tell someone what machine vision is, is all about, I'm using the example of, of baking cookies. Let's say that, that, uh, that uh, you are building, instead of baking the cookies yourself, you are building a machine that, that are baking these cookies for you. It's as a, um, within some kind of, of bakery factory. So you have this machine, large machine, and out of this machine comes a conveyor belt. And on this conveyor belt you have a, a, a stream of, of cookies coming out. And typically when they come out of the machine, you cannot be like 100% sure that, uh, that uh, they are pure and nice, that they are not burned, or, or maybe they are even have some kind of cracks or, or uh, erroneous size or whatever. And those cookies, you don't want to pack them into to the paper boxes. You want to throw them away. So what will you do then? Yeah, You will hire some, some person sitting behind or, or beside this conveyor belt, looking at the stream of cookies coming out of this machine, and you can imagine all you know, this kind of work, you know, you're sitting there and you are visualizing all these cookies and whenever you're seeing a bad cookie, you have to be quick enough and throw it away from the conveyor belt. And that is also, of course, a, a quite expensive solution because you need to pay this guy sitting there behind the, the conveyor belt. So what we do then is that we, instead, we are teaching a camera uh, to understand what the camera itself can see, to, to interpret the information coming from these pixels. So we place the camera, you know, on top uh, over this uh, conveyor belt, and the camera is viewing down on this conveyor belt, seeing and observing the the uh, cookies as they are passing by. So then we are performing these uh, different computational steps that I just gave you a short introduction to earlier, where we can compute, for instance, features such as how, uh, what, what kind of color these cookies have, what size they have how round these cookies are, uh, you know, and from, based from those features, you can also make a deci decision whether they are supposed to be accepted and placed within that paper box, or if we are going to use maybe some um, high pressure air that blows the cookies away from the conveyor belt. So now, how do these uh, machine vision systems, how do they work? Uh, we have earlier in the introduction, I, I gave you the different computational steps within the data flow graph, being firstly <coughs> image acquisition, and then pre-processing, and then uh, uh, segmentation. And after segmentation, we do component labeling. After component labeling, we compute different uh, features. And after we have computed features, we, we do the, the classification of the different image objects. 
And we do know also from these systems that these systems, they are data dominated at the front end close to the, the, the actual uh, detector, the image detector, because we have a huge amount of data that is produced every time unit of, of pixel data. So the, the, the data intensity is actually higher, you know, the closer to the, the image acquisition that you are, you are coming. But the idea also behind the computation is that we want to increase the abstraction of the uh, information that we uh, retrieve from, from this machine vision system. So at the final output of the system, it means that we should get an interpretation and, and a validation, a refined information about the scene, what we are actually seeing, and some measurement of the features that we are looking in the observation area of this machine vision system. And about image acquisition, what we have here is a camera, and uh, we have illumination, and we use the properties of, of illumination also to increase the, the visual properties of the features that we want to observe. And we are observing a, a three-dimensional scene through a, a lens. And, and the reflected light from this 3D scene is actually passing by or passing through the lens system. And these light rays are, are hitting the, the surface of a, of a pixelized sensor. So each pixel then contains information about uh, uh, intensity of light and, and color information of, of light that was reflected back from this 3D scene. And then we have a two-dimensional representation, which is a projection of this three-dimensional scene. Pre-processing is a computational step that you perform then after you have acquired the, the image from the, this, the camera sensor. And the reason why we want to apply some kind of uh, pre-processing could, for instance, be that we have an, an uneven uh, illumination of the scene. So this background shading then needs to be removed. Or it can also be that maybe the, the image is polluted with some kind of noise. And this noise, statistical noise, can then disturb the, the further on computational steps in, in the later processing of the machine vision system. So we apply some kind of operation then to clean the image from this noise. But then on the other hand, you know, when you're doing this pre-processing, you might also run into problems with that you maybe re reduce the sharpness of the objects. Segmentation is the process where we want to find the interesting image objects and separate them from the background. And this is typically done by using the, the grayscale image or color image that we are retrieving from the, the pre-processing step. And we are then looking into the statistics of each pixels uh, and making this decision based on the grayscale value or the color value if this pixel belongs to any kind of, of image object or if it belongs to the background. And then by doing this segmentation, one important conclusion is then that you are also actually reducing the amount of, of data because the data representation from a segmented image is actually the, the, the pixel values of being an object or a background. That means that you have a binary pixel, either it's, it's one or it's zero. On the other hand, if you compare with the, the grayscale image or the color image, then the, each pixel is represented by an, an integer, and the depth of this integer is then, the size of it is uh, then um, related to the number of bits that you have assigned for, for the pixel representation. Component labeling is a computational step where we are taking a binary segmented image uh, as input. And this image contains then a number of objects of interest. These objects can be, for instance, me, and it can also be a number of other objects. And then by a scanning procedure, we are assigning each one of these objects a unique code. And then, then this unique code can also be uh, visualized by its own uh, unique color. So each one of these objects uh, around me then can have its unique color. Feature extraction is the computational steps that comes after the component labeling. And now we have a, a number of, of uh, image components of, of interest, but we also want to compute certain properties of these image components that will be a description of, of, of each one, a compact description of each one of these components. And this description could, for instance, be like the, the area of the image uh, component. It can be the sub-pixel position. 
It can be different uh, statistical moments of the grayscale or the color information of the, the region of an, um, of an object. Can be compactness, can be ansometry or whatever and so on, so on, so on. I would like now to describe a little bit more in detail how uh, a couple of these features actually are computed. And the feature I'm thinking of now is the compactness and the ansometry. I will start with the ansometry. And uh, when you compute the ansometry, you are using the major axis and the minor axis that describes an ellipse. And the ansometry is the quote between them. Uh, if I'm standing like this and you consider me as an, an image object and then the, the ellipse is surrounding me, then you will have a certain value, of course, for the major axis and, and the minor axis. And these values will then, of course, be quite a lot different if you compare to if I'm standing like this. And you will have a corresponding output on the feature called uh, ansometry. And the same goes for the computation of compactness. And the compactness is then computed as uh, the parameter in square divided by the component's area. And the parameter then is meant that the, the parameter is the accumulated length of the border of the image object that is surrounding the, the area. And then if I'm standing like this, I will represent an object that is very much solid. Uh, and then compared to if I'm standing like this, then of course the parameter will increase quite a lot because the, the border, the surrounding border will be much longer. So the, the corresponding uh, compactness will then change quite a lot. Let us now assume that we want to try to use these two different uh, uh, properties of objects, compactness and ansometry. And we want to apply it on an application where we want to separate different letters. Assume that we have a, this OCR application, Original Character Recognition. And let's say now that we, we, we first try to apply it on the letters uh, O and C. And you can clearly see, see now how the statistics is built up on a two-dimensional feature space. And you can see two different uh, classes that can be easily separated from each other by a, a following uh, statistical classifier. But on the other hand, if you apply these uh, properties and compute them on P and Q, what you see then is that the statistics that is built up here uh, is not really showing two distinct classes. So the conclusion that we can make from this analysis is that if we want to separate P and Q, we also need additional to compute additional features. But these two features, uh, compactness and ansometry, is good enough to distinguish between the letters C and O. Classification is the computational step, the final computational step, where we want to distinguish between different objects based on the features that we have computed earlier in the machine vision system. And we can do this based on the statistics from these features. And we build up statistics based on, on training sets. In this case we see uh, a probability density function showing the probability of having a certain two-dimensional feature vector uh, and the, the probability density function in this case, if you think about an, an OCR application and, and letters, we can clearly see three different distinct classes of, of letters, three letters. Uh, uh, as to the, the classification task now, the task is to be able to, from a certain feature vector, to make the most accurate choice of to which class this feature vector belongs to, based on the statistics that we have priori computed based from training sets. Bayes' decision rule is a well-known theory for statistical classifiers. And based on these statistics, we can develop the probability omega i over x, meaning the posterior probability, the, the probability that you can compute afterwards, later on in the system, and the probability of having class omega i given a certain feature vector input x. And based on this probability, then the statistical classifier can make the choice on whether which one of the classes a certain feature vector belongs to. And on this side now, we see a, a two-dimensional graph showing three different classes, 
omega 1 to omega 3. But we also three, see the hyperlines, and the hyperlines define uh, the positions where the probability is equal between the different classes. So then if you are unluckily enough you know, to have a feature vector coming into the classifier that resides and lies exactly on these lines, it means that you can only have a, a, a certainty of 50% of making the right choice. Now when we have reached the end of, of the, the uh, description of this machine vision system and we, we think back you know, in terms of an OCR application, then, in fact, you know, on the input of this machine vision system, we have a high data-intensive stream of pixels being a video stream. And on the output, we have a low-intensity description. Output from the classifier comes a stream of ASCII codes corresponding to the, the recognized letters. So this machine vision system then do actually works as a compression algorithm as well. And we have increased uh, the level of, of abstraction from just visualizing the, the pixel data until that we actually can describe each uh, individual letters that is residing somewhere in the observation area.